Hello everyone. I'll talk about security measures to consider when using Kubernetes. You know that Kubernetes is a de facto standard for container management platform orchestration tool. I'll talk about 30 minutes from now. I would be grateful if you could listen to it till the end. My name is Hiroki Akiba. I work for a company called Ojis-RY in Japan. We have providing total solutions matched to each and every client. We have providing IT strategy development and consulting, system design, operation and management, seamless and integrated solutions for client. We are Silver members of Kubernetes Certified Service Provider. Today's agenda. First, let's talk about the options for running the typical Kubernetes container management tools in a production environment. Next, I talk about what cloud native security tools along with public cloud service like AWS and Kubernetes security features and the cloud native computing foundation ecosystem and more. Next, I talk about how to make about security measures for the Kubernetes environment while using cloud native security measures tools and cloud vendor solutions and more. Let's talk about the options for running the typical Kubernetes container management tools in a production environment. This is taken from the Cloud Native Computing Foundation survey report published this year. Looking at this survey report, we can see that many companies use public cloud managed services such as AWS CKS, GCP GKE, Azure AKS, and so on. Many companies use the container management service provided by each public cloud vendor instead of building and operating a container management platform from scratch yourself. Even with the container management tools of each public cloud vendor, there is a responsibility between the public cloud vendor and the user. This is a shared responsibility model published by each cloud vendor, such as AWS, GCP, and Azure. What all public cloud vendors have in common is that facility layers such as physical server, storage, and networks are the responsibility of the public cloud vendor. For example, let's talk about AWS. When building and operating a container environment that takes availability and fault tolerance into consideration, there are two main options. One is the pattern of using a container management solution provided by AWS. The other is a pattern that doesn't use AWS management solutions. It's building and operating a Kubernetes or OpenShift environment on the EC2 server. When using the container management solution provided by AWS, there are two additional options to use ECS or EKS. The advantage of using these two options is that you can leave the control of the container orchestration to a managed service. In addition, there are issues to type and forget to type in the worker node layer where workloads such as web applications run. In the case of issues to type, the user operates the worker node. In the case of forget to type, AWS operates the worker node. I have mapped the shared responsibility model with and without AWS ECS and EKS. AWS is responsible for the operation and management of the orange part. Others are managed by the user. In the correct type of ECS and EKS, AWS have the responsibility for EC2 server of worker nodes that run the container, including Docker engine. AWS manages the operation of EC2 server layer. So there is a possibility that patch application of EC2 server and usage view of EC2 server can be made more efficient. But the fog type takes a long time to start because it starts from the OS when depriting the container. In the case of fog type, this kind of consideration is necessary. 
from here, let's talk about security solutions in the Cloud Native Computing Foundation landscape and security consideration for the Kubernetes Container Platform. It's a copy of the security and compliance of the Cloud Native Computing Foundation landscape as of November 2nd, 2020. The solutions presented include a wide variety of tools that can be used with voices and paid tools, such and consulting solutions. For example, FARC is OSS auditing tools, recently incubated. Kubebench is a CIS Kubernetes benchmark tool. Kubehunter is a penetration test tool. Trevi is a container image binary check tool. They are being developed by Aqua Security as OSS. Clear is implemented as a container image binary check tool for AWS ECR. Sidding and Parrot are developed and offering pet integrated security management tool. Kubernetes has certainly matured into a well adapted container orchestration platform. Also, it remains complex to manage and secure. We must implement a comprehensive approach to securing our Kubernetes workload. First of all, when considering security measures, it's important to understand what kind of security threat existing Kubernetes. This fear is except from our ID book featured on the Kubernetes-security.info website. It shows that many of the components that make up Kubernetes cluster are vulnerable to malicious attacks from the outside. For example, attacks on security files in control plane, worker nodes, and containers, and so on. There is a risk of being exposed to attacks due to security related misconfiguration. On the left, there are boundaries where security should be considered for each component of Kubernetes cluster. On the right, I would like to organize security measures into 10 security categories. For example, on the public cloud, Kubernetes cluster consists of master node and worker node. Inside the Kubernetes cluster, it's logically divided by namespace, pods and containers running it. It's important to consider each security measures while being aware of these Kubernetes boundaries. It's not safe to protect only one specific place, but it's important to take measures to minimize the blast radius by defense in depth even if malicious attacks is performed. On the left, there are 10 security categories I have classified. I arranged the corresponding each tools and solutions side by side. From the left, public cloud layer, for example, AWS security services. Next, features of Kubernetes. Next, ecosystem of cloud native computing foundation. About AWS public cloud, use IAM for authentication and authorization. Use inspector as a vulnerability countermeasure. Use Guard Duty, Mesh, and Security Hub for governance and compliance applications. About Kubernetes, use Service Account or Role for authentication and authorization. Use Network Policy as a firewall. Use Resource Quota or Limit Range to limit CPU or memory resource usage. About Ecosystem of Cloud Native Computing Foundation. Consider when you want to add uh, extended features on Kubernetes. If you want to centrally manage authentication, authorization, governance, and compliance, you can use Open Policy Agent. If you want to control communication and encrypt between pods at layer 7 or higher, you can use Istio and Envoy. If you want to comprehensive security measure of container for life cycle, I think you should buy pet products such as Aqua or Palo Alto or Sysleek. From here, I will talk about the details of the measures of 10 security categories in order. In Kubernetes, there are three major steps of authentication and authorization. First, it's authentication. 
Service account authenticates a peer request from pod container program. User and group authenticates a peer request from external clients and users. Next is authorization. The role controls what operations are performed on what Kubernetes resources. There are two types of roles namespace binding or control across the Kubernetes cluster. Next is admission control. Governance for API operations on Kubernetes clusters. It's guardrail for keeping the Kubernetes cluster safe. For example, even if you make an API request to deploy a new port and authentication and authorization are permitted. If CPU and memory resource quota limit setting admission control is violated, the deployment of a new port will be diffused. Admission controls are designed to help Kubernetes admins implement security by default deployment. These can serve many purposes from resource control to provisioning, as well as security aspects such as intercepting requests to the Kubernetes API server before making Kubernetes object. Next, consider the pattern that which boundaries the workload should be separate and run on Kubernetes cluster. First of all, the biggest isolation option is to run multiple workloads within the same Kubernetes cluster, or two isolate workloads across multiple Kubernetes clusters. When the workload is divided among multiple Kubernetes clusters, the usage efficiency of CPU and memory resources may be low. But there is advantage that CPU and memory resources and communication control can be managed cheaply. When running multiple workloads within the same Kubernetes cluster, there are considerations such as whether to logically separate them by namespaces. When logically dividing multiple workloads by namespace, communication control and resource quota can be limited by namespace. This is useful for managing security and governance. In addition, you may need to control which port runs on which the work node. For example, you want to run a port on a work node with GPU. You may need to run on multiple work nodes considering the redundancy of your web application. You may need to run the same batch application on the same work node in order to increase the usage destiny of CPU and memory resources. In some cases, you may not want to share the same storage space between multiple workloads. Next, let's talk about wire and network communication encryption. There are multiple use network communication in Kubernetes cluster. There are two types of communication. The green line is network communication for application services. The red line network communication for operation and maintenance of the Kubernetes cluster. In this configuration diagram, the worker node that runs the workload is located in the private network segment. Consider whether the mass node should expose the API request endpoint to the internet or limit API requests only from private network segment. For other communications, API requests from the maintenance server to the master node. Network communication to deploy ports from master nodes to worker node. Network communication that shows the container image from the container registry. The application content running on the worker node connects to the database outside Kubernetes cluster. Performs HTTPS network communication from the internet via the load balancer. At each boundary of network communication. It's necessary to consider network communication controlled by file and encryption. Next, let's talk about encrypting stored data. In Kubernetes cluster, make two state storage with persistent volume and persistent volume claim. In the case of AWS, you can use persistent volume with block storage like EBS and network file system like Elastic File Services. Furthermore, it's often operated in combination with cloud layer storage services. For example, 
you can use object storage like S3. Additional database like RDS. Container S3 like ECL. Git repository like code commit. EBS, EFS, S3 and RDS has transparently home server-side encryption by enabling encrypt options in combination with services such as key management tool. Consider client-side encryption. Where the application encrypts and decrypts the data and stores it in storage. In Kubernetes, there is a secret object resource that handles secret values such as login ID and password to the database. However, this secret object resource only best 64 encrypts the secret value. It's insufficient for security to save or operate it in the Git repository as it is. It's good to combine tools that can manage the secret values securely. For example, Kubesec, Kubernetes external secrets, shield secrets, Hashicorp port, and so on. A brief introduction to shield secrets. If you want to know more details, Please see GitHub directory. Encrypt your secret values as a shield secret, which is safe to store even to public repository. The shield secrets can be decrypted only by the controller running in the target cluster. And nobody else is able to obtain the original secret values from the shield secret. You can install using a method such as Helm chart or customize. The shield secrets control transparently encrypt and decrypt secret values. The shield secrets control allow you to rotate and update encrypt keys. This is consideration for managing secret values. Don't hard code your application and manage file. Change the secret values for each production and staging and development. Set the expression date and rotation of the encrypt key file. There are several ways to pass the secret value to the application container, but it should be passed via the volume, because there are cases where environment variables are written to the log when the process crash. In addition, there are cases where it can be viewed with the kube control describe port command or docker inspect command. You can use Berero. This is always true of Blumiatan's project. You can use Berero to back up the Kubernetes resource such as persistent volume, development pod, and config map running in Kubernetes cluster. As a step distinction for the backup data, you can specify the volume of the Berero server or a public cloud vendor storage with access privilege such as AWS S3 or a Google Storage Service or Azure Bloom Storage. If we want to back up object storage and additional database of a public cloud service such as RDS and S3 outside Kubernetes cluster, use the backup function provided by each public cloud vendor. If we use a Kubernetes workload as stateless, you may not need to back up the you are running Kubernetes resource. For example, if you have made GitHub in your CI CD pipeline, all your application code and managed configuration file are in the Git repository. If you want to update or roll back your the Kubernetes workload, you may run the CHD pipeline to update or roll back your the Kubernetes workload. Typical GitHub tools are Flux, Argo, and Jenkins X, and so on. Next, let's talk about multi countermeasures. Consider vulnerability countermeasure from the control life cycle. From left to right, there are three phases build, ship, and run. The build phase. You may use base control image such as Docker Hub and build the container with the Docker file. Other times, perform vulnerability check of base control image and unit test and configuration test. The ship phase. You may store the build control image and managed file in the container registry and git repository. At the times, check for the build control image regularly for vulnerabilities. The run phase. You may deploy container and managed file for the Kubernetes cluster and the Kubernetes workload is running. At the times, 
Check.js benchmark and penetration test to Kubernetes cluster. Perform security check and test in each phase. Furthermore, left side more than right side. Namely, uh, upstream measures are more effective. Kubernetes has a minor update every three months. Therefore, you should update the Kubernetes version regularly, and you should update the host OS version of the master node and worker node of your Kubernetes cluster regularly. In addition, if you have used Kubernetes package manager such as Helm Chart, Customize, and Operator, also update this version regularly. Next, manage node security. Use HostOS optimized for the container platform. Restrict use for privileged users. For example, use root rest model. Restrict access to node and promotion to privileged users. Limit monitoring of the node's file system. The build phase. Create a control image with the minimum required package and library tool. Don't include compiled tool and cache data at big time. Use the container based image on real container registry. For example, Red Hat Container Catalog, Google Cloud Platform Marketplace, and so on. Use the Red Hat version and vulnerability checked on container image. The ship phase. Check the control image regularly, not just once. Add a version control of container image tag. Delete all container image regularly. Use a container image signature using Docker Content Trust. Add the build phase and ship phase. Use appropriate checking and testing through for each layer. For example, cross project check cloud layer security risk of infrastructure as a code such as Telehome and AWS Cloud Formation. QSEC check security risk and best practice for Kubernetes managed file. Open policy agent conf test check custom security risk for Kubernetes managed file. And lint check best practice for Docker file. Truby check static vulnerability for container images. At the run phase, prohibit container startup and promotion as a privileged user. Prohibit access to the root file system. Disable and use the recent port to eliminate unnecessary access interface. Set appropriate CPU and memory in the container to eliminate neighbor noisy. Let challenge DevSecOps. Some of these settings can be controlled by the port security policy of Kubernetes. I'll talk about the port security policy setting example later. In addition, limit input and output access from container to storage. Limit network communication on containers. Limit the number of process startup on containers. Make effective use of app armor or sec comp. Also, consider pet security products that can detect and block suspicious container behavior. Pod security policy can control the behavior on pod and container from the Kubernetes layer. For example, prohibit containers in privileged mode, prohibit promotion to root user, prohibit writing to the raw file system. Unnecessary capabilities should be disabled. For example, caps net role capabilities can send and receive ability Ethernet packets. This should be disabled to prevent misuse of app spoofing. The discussion in the OSS community that port security policy will move to the open policy agent in the future. So be careful about future tense. At the run phase, use appropriate checking and testing tools for each layer. For example, cross point check cloud layer security risk. Kube Hunter check penetration test for the Kubernetes cluster and node level security vulnerability. Kube Ben check CIS benchmark for the Kubernetes cluster. Open policy agent gatekeeper check custom security risk and governance setting for Kubernetes resource. Polaris check best practice in Kubernetes workload configuration. Goldilocks recommend CPU memory resource limit and request based on actual resource usage of the container.
contribute the static check vulnerability for container image. Next is monitoring. From security point of view, collecting and aggregating the Kubernetes API request logs so that it can be detected when now errors occurs. Furthermore, it's important to be ready for forensic investigation. Observability is talked about in three pairs, its metrics and logs and trace. This pair is taken from blog site published by elastic.co and grafana.com site. It's important to be able to capture and detect and track the applicate logs and metrics. For example, if you have used AWS EKS, enable the EKS logs option and transfer the API request logs to CloudWatch logs. This fear is end user technology radar of Cloud Native Computing Foundation. It's classified into three categories Adapt, Trial, and Access. According to the results of this survey, many companies have adapt OSS tools such as Prometheus and Grafana and Elastic and so on. You can see that many companies use multiple monitoring tools. If you have also interested, take a look at radar.cncf.io site. It's important to perform appropriate logging for each component at the cloud layer. There are cloud operation logs and host OS access logs and network communication logs and so on. Never auditing and network cloud logging options. At the Kubernetes layer, there are Kubernetes API server request logs and network communication logs between master node and worker node. Enable the Kubernetes audit policy. At the container and application layer, collecting and aggregating application logs. Next set from several container logging architecture patterns to suit your container platform. Next, let's talk about governance and compliance. Open policy agent Gatekeeper provides more flexible and extended governance control by offloading the Kubernetes administration control with a webhook. Open policy agent defines policies and rules in the language level. Open policy agent can define access rules for Kubernetes resource for specific users' API and operation. So it separates permission control from the application code. Falco is used for container auditing. For example, make the startup Falcpot with demo set. The Falcpot monitors system calls for container running on worker node. When behavior of container deviates from the Falco rules, Falcpot outputs alert logs. Falco's rules are defined by default. In addition, you can customize Falco audit rules. Introducing more about Falco. Falco can monitor the behavior of the following containers. For example, the container started in privilege mode, mounted a sensitive directory path. Read on the right sensitive files. Genic Falco rules are published on the securityhub.dev site. There are notes. Falco can't detect write to host passband mount by processing the container or write via simple clink. Therefore, if you want to detect it, monitor file access with auditing functions provided by each Linux distribution. Finally, a summary. We must take measures in all directions, but there are various security measures to consider. It's important to defense in depth, not just in one place. The Kubernetes and Cloud Native Computing Foundation ecosystem are frequently updated and complex. Therefore, if you have used public clouds such as AWS or Azure or GCP, consider using the security features provided by each public cloud vendor. Also, Consider using the Cloud Native Security Tools of Cloud Native Computing Foundation ecosystem. This is the end of my presentation. Thank you for watching. I hope this content will be useful to you.